Alrighty, today we'll review some bad properties. Properties that you're guaranteed to lose money on. They'll never make you money renting. It'd be probably horrible to live in them too. I don't know why people would even try to buy these and rent them. Not really sure, but hey, look, I'm not a financial advisor. This is the disclaimer. I'm not an investment person. I'm just a YouTuber. This is for entertainment only. Don't do anything I say or you will lose all of this right here. Okay, going into some bad properties, let's take a look. So here's what to look for. Different things that could be in an ad, different things that can be in pictures, different things that'll tell you you're about to lose all of your money if you even bother looking at this ad any longer. Okay, the first one is, is it being sold as is? You know, and it's, it's kind of up to you here, people. If you want a really, really low-priced investment property to fix up and possibly flip or fix up and rent for more and have some value in it, that's kind of up to you. But uh, it, for me, I try to do the minimal amount of work possible uh, so get it rented out as quickly as possible after closing on the deal. Is there water damage in any of the pictures or in the description? Look, if you have a roof leaking and it's going through to the basement, this is going to be a problem. You're going to have problems all through the house. You're going to have problems in the walls. You're going to have problems in the ceiling. You're going to have problems in the flooring. It's going to be a disaster. Try to stay away from houses with water damage. Bad remodels. People love to go in and say their house is all remodeled, but then you look under the sink and it's spraying water everywhere. We'll show you one here in a moment that was remodeled, but look, they didn't even bother touching the electrical right here. Bad electrical, which should have been fixed in a remodel, but they don't even bother touching the electrical, so it's got all this garbage in the walls for old wire, maybe that old paper wire, nothing up to code. Really bad stuff two prong outlets that you can just tell are going to be no good and you can tell a lot of times with the electrical with the age of the house if the house was built before 1970 or 1980 there's a good chance you're going to have some problems with electrical in it uh, and then time on the market you know if a house has been on the market for 200 some odd days there's either one something really wrong with it or two it's way overpriced and the owner won't come down so we'll check that out. The neighborhood, you know, you're gonna wanna Google street view some neighborhoods when you go to actually buy a house. Make sure there aren't like flipped over cars. Make sure there's not a bunch of violence and stuff going on in the Google pictures. You can actually see this. You can see trash laying in the street. You can see people's crappy yards. You can see unmowed grass. You can see broken down everything everywhere. Stay away from those neighborhoods if you want a good A or B quality rental property. Schools, we'll check out the schools in at least one of these areas. You want to try to get good schools. If you have good schools, usually the neighborhood's pretty good. They kind of go hand in hand. You don't end up with a top rated high school, middle school, or elementary school in a state if it's in a war zone of a neighborhood, okay? It just doesn't happen. Okay, and then you want to look at local news. Has anything major happened there that's causing people to sell? Is there uh, civil unrest, for instance? Is there more crime than usual? And we'll show you a crime map of one of these areas. If you're new to an area, you can actually look up a crime map and tell how the crime is, where it is, and the frequency. Do you want to own a home that's in the middle of an uh, intense crime area? I wouldn't want to live there as a tenant, and neither will your tenant. They're going to choose one elsewhere. Okay, here come some properties. So here we go with a house in Detroit, Michigan. Hey, you know, uh, it's Michigan. I don't personally rent there or uh, own properties there. But, you know, you, you might want to. Don't really know. But uh, this is going to be a look at what could be a decent property. Uh, except we're going to do a Google Street View and see that it's not. So what we have here looks like the house is decently redone. They say it's been remodeled. Looks like it has a good kitchen. Okay, yeah, uh, some flooring here. That's okay. That's usable. Uh, let me see. Three bed, two bath, 1,152 square feet. Uh, probably rent that for 800 a month here. Um, but, you know, you might have some trouble with your tenants. We're going to switch to a street view since this house looks good on the inside and looks good on the outside. Do notice some bars on the window. That might not be too good a sign. It's on all of the windows. Uh, so, yeah, it might not be the best sign if the house has bars. Um, but, okay, here we go. Here's a street view. 
Here it is. So we pan over. This is the neighborhood. We look. This is an abandoned house right here. It has a door uh, right here that's covered in uh, moss, um, trash in the yard. Uh, let's check this out. That might actually be the house that we're looking at. Oh, it doesn't look to be the house that we're looking at, but it looks a lot like it. But abandoned house, all that stuff going on there. Hmm, um, let me see here. Uh, this house has a big board over these windows. Uh, something right there. And then this house has, you know, bars on the door, trash in the backyard just piled up. Uh, this house doesn't look to be maintained very well. Oh my goodness, we got an abandoned house right here. Welcome to Detroit, my friends. Okay. Yeah, so there you go. That's what Street View can show you. It's uh, probably not going to be good to uh, get a house here. All right, next property. So we'll go to this property in Montgomery, Alabama, across the country from our house in Detroit. Looks good on the outside. Yes. Oh, nice, nice grass, nice landscaping, nice porch here. Looks good. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's got some wood flooring. Uh, yep, let's look at what problems we might have with this house. Remember we mentioned the electrical? Well, uh, you come down here to the kitchen and right by the sink, there's a plug. It is a two-prong plug right there. It's not grounded. It's not GFCI. Here, we'll go to a bigger picture of it for you. There, we zoomed in. You can, it's grainy, I know, but because we, we zoomed in, but you can see it's two-prong outlet. So what happens, you have a uh, Mr. or Mrs. Tenant here with their toaster um, and their cat. Uh, they're doing sink, uh, you know, dishes over here in the sink. Uh, and their cat goes and knocks the toaster into the sink. And, uh, you know, that what's going to end up happening, uh, that tenant's going to get fried by the electrical here because, number one, it's not grounded, not a proper outlet to have next to a sink. Um, yeah, so that, that's actually like a uh, deadly hazard, having that that close. Now, they don't have a picture of the panel in this house, uh, but my guess is that panel could still be on fuses. And if it's on fuses, well, uh, that tenant is definitely going to have a rough time with that electrocution that happens at this sink here. So be aware of that. Check out that electrical. You're going to be replacing all the electrical in this house, probably to the tune of about $5,000 if you were to purchase this. You'd have yourself a nice, shocking surprise. Pun intended. Okay, so that's the electrical in this house, and it's probably the same all over. You see, we've got these, these same little plate covers here. It's probably all the same original with these metal plate covers and ungrounded outlets. So you're going to be tearing into all these walls going up and down in them. Um, this house, not sure when it was built, but if it was built before 1960, you're going to have a bunch of studs and everything going everywhere in these walls. You're not going to be able to fish wires in and out, so you're going to have to tear out the paneling or tear out this drywall to switch out those plugs with grounded plugs since it doesn't look like anything in this house is grounded. So for this house, we also checked out the schools. If you were to go ahead and buy this house for $112,000, uh, definitely wouldn't recommend it uh, as a rental property because you're going to have trouble with these schools. All right, switch to the school view. So these are the schools for that house. They get a solid 1 out of 10 rating for each school, elementary, middle school, high school. All the schools in this area are horribly rated. So yeah, number one, you have to replace all the electrical. And number two, you're not going to get a good quality tenant in there that cares about the school system because they're all junk. So uh, we would go ahead and avoid this property. It does look like they kind of did a decent job on the remodeling and all that. But, you know, they, they kind of saved money by not doing the electrical. Uh, maybe hoping somebody else would do the electrical later on. For me, that is not an option. It just costs way too much money up front. It's just not worth it. Go with a house that has grounded outlets or proper electrical, and you'll end up a lot better on pretty much every rental property. Also, all their bathroom and kitchen fixtures appear to be really old. Uh, so, yeah, if you want a decent rental, you're going to be go ahead and replacing all these cabinets and all these bathroom uh, uh, you know, vanities and everything. Uh, looks like they did install a proper plug in here. Uh, we'll edit this out later. Yeah, that looks like a grounded outlet. Hey, they got something right. Okay, good for them. 
All right, so here's the crime map for our property in Montgomery, Alabama. You can tell, um, yeah, it's a lot of crime around here. This is uh, like the last month. Um, our property was right in here next to Alabama State University. Um, universities are uh, pretty well known for having high crime around them. Bunch of vulnerable students, high population density. And our house was right in here somewhere. So you can see gun crimes, vehicle thefts and crimes, assaults. Oh my goodness, so much going on right in here. So to find a better neighborhood, you know, we might want to come down here into the suburbs. There's no gun crimes down here. Uh, a lot less, a lot less uh, population density. Um, looks like not nearly as many violent crimes. Same thing uh, kind of over here in these suburbs. Not really a whole lot of crime over here. Maybe we should look over here for a house instead. But anyway, you can find these crime maps for a lot of areas in the United States, or you can find a crime map similar to this for where you're trying to purchase a home. Keep that in mind. All right, back to the slides. So we'll go to the next slide here, your initial convo with the person. So you took a look at the house and everything looks good in the house. Not those two houses we just looked at. Those are uh, uh, what I, you, know, you, you would want to go ahead and pass on those. There's definitely better houses uh, 10 miles down the street that are going to be in a lot better school system, a lot better situation for renting to people. But when you have an initial conversation with the owner of a house or the realtor, Find out, uh, you know, if you're dealing with a for sale by owner, um, that's one thing you want to keep in mind. Uh, you know, for sale by owners, typically not as uh, well trained or well reared or well, not as well educated in real estate as a realtor would be. So I t usually would want to bring my realtor in fairly early on after my initial conversation with them. Uh, but I like to have an initial conversation with the owner of the house to kind of gauge their flexibility, build some rapport, and see if there's anything else wrong with the house. Uh, usually you can talk to a for sale by owner and they'll fill you in on some things. You can decide from there. Um, but then also, uh, if there's no sign of negotiating, if they're like, yeah, that's the price it is. It's, it's going to sit on the market until it sells at that. You may want to go ahead and pass on the property unless it fits your numbers. Um, you know, if they're not willing to negotiate anything, what's going to end up happening, you're going to go ahead and put the property under contract and your inspector is going to come back and say, hey, you know, this thing needs like five or six grand worth of work. Uh, and you're going to take that back to that owner or that realtor. And they're going to be like, no, like I said, uh, property is, is uh, firm at that price. We're not adjusting it any. So you can back out at this point, but you already spent three to $500 on a property inspection. So like, what's the point of even inspecting a property if this for sale by owner or the owner of the property is not willing to lower the price at all? Just skip it, go on to the next one. Maybe revisit it in a week or two when it's set on the market for even longer. So in, in your initial convo, you're gonna go ahead and build the rapport like we talked about. Um, are they trying to build rapport with you as well? Uh, you know, if it's an owner or realtor that's not really willing to talk to you once you tell them you're a real estate investor, uh, blah, 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 all this other stuff about yourself. If they're like, eh, yeah, okay, great. So would you want to put an offer in or not? Um, you know, you might want to go ahead and consider what you're doing at this point. They're going to try to go ahead and push you through a sale. It may not be the best people to deal with. So building rapport goes both ways. Me personally, I don't care to work with people uh, or buy things from people, anybody, whether it's an appliance or a house or anything at the store, whatever. If they're not willing to be polite and try to build rapport with me, then I really don't want to deal with them. So I'll back out of a deal just for that reason, unless the numbers are really good already. So pay attention to their responses to things. Are they kind of dodging your questions? You know, like if you ask them, hey, when was that electrical updated? It looked like there was probably a couple two prong outlets. And they say, oh, you know, I had my electrician go through there. I'm pretty sure it's all good. But you know, hey, what you really got to pay attention to is that new electrical meter. We put one of those in. 
Well, that's great if they put in a new uh, meter outside, but what if the panel inside is complete garbage and none of the outlets are grounded? You're still doing five grand worth of work. Hell, I can get a meter replaced outside or upgraded for 500 bucks or less. Uh, you know, it's not expensive to do that part. The expensive part is the panel inside with all the grounding going all through the house. So pay attention to their responses on that to say, hey, you know, uh, was there any water damage in the house? And, you know, they kind of have to tell you if they know of water damage. And if they say, well, that'll be on the uh, disclosures. So, you know, at that point, you're closer to closing and they've given you disclosures on the property. Like, yeah, there's standing water in the living room. Uh, you know, you're probably wasted the last three weeks of your life trying to purchase this property if they're not willing to disclose things up front. So ask them these questions, you know, they, they should be willing to disclose to you verbally everything that they're going to put on their written disclosure for the property. Say, hey, you know, uh, is there lead paint in that property? Not that it really matters. I mean, anything built before 1979 or whatever, whatever the date is, uh, you have to actually give the tenant a uh, lead paint disclosure anyway. Uh, it's required by law in a lot of places. Um, so, you know, if they're not willing to tell you anything about that and the property was built, you know, in 1950, well, that's a problem. You know, if they can't tell you anything basic, like, you know, the paint from 1950 had lead in it. So, you know, if they don't come out and say, yeah, we had it all removed or yeah, it's not a problem. We've repainted the entire house and made sure there's no flaking or everything's encapsulated. Then you're should, you know, like, why are you dealing with them? Why are you dealing with a, a property owner? or realtor that's trying to hide stuff from you. So, you know, like I said, they have to disclose stuff they know about to you if you ask. Like if six people were murdered in the living room and you ask them, was somebody murdered here? Uh, and they say no, and they know about it, uh, they're lying to you. That's like a uh, really bad thing to do in a real estate deal uh, and allows you to get out of it if you discover they're lying. So anyway, yeah, just have a good conversation with them. You'll figure out all this stuff and, you know, keep an eye on these little uh, signs that they can give you uh, that you need to back out of the deal before you spend any money on it, right? So, you know, if you, if you think that they're lying to you in your initial conversation or refusing to reveal info to you, even without you having a purchase agreement put in, just don't even bother putting in a purchase agreement. I mean, heck, we've shown you how to find other houses on here. There's another house a mile down the road that you can buy and probably make more money on with a much nicer, better owner that'll tell you they've upgraded everything, that'll have grounded outlets, that'll have, you know, be a good neighborhood, be good schools, and they'll, they'll be willing to work with you and negotiate on things. So don't be afraid to back out of a deal during that initial conversation. And you can always follow up with them in a week or two. It's, you know, if that house has been sitting there for a while or they're a difficult seller, then you're going to have the opportunity in a couple weeks to circle back with them. You know, I've, I've done this before. Yes, I've put in an offer on a house. It hasn't been accepted. Uh, you know, the owner wasn't really willing to come down to my price that I really needed. And I circled back with them over the next couple weeks to, to a month. And, you know, we, we worked closer to getting the property <laughs> To getting the property purchased but then you know what the one across the street came up for sale and was much better than their house so i bought that one instead it ended up working out a lot better for me i ended up getting a 1.5 percent rent to value ratio on that house bought it for hundred two thousand dollars rented it for a 1700 per month that is not easy to do, but I'm glad I didn't deal with that first owner that was trying to sell me stuff across the street because they weren't really willing to negotiate or deal with me the, the way that I needed to. And it turned out a better opportunity came up literally across the street. So keep that in mind. Just uh, don't be afraid to get rid of somebody that is being difficult with you uh, or won't give you the info that you want. There's always another deal out there. Okay, next slide. So that'll do it on the bad properties reviewed and how to deal with it. So you saw a couple bad properties there. We'll do another bad property review later on with a lot of these tips as well. We'll just come up with more properties and what to look for. Bigger uh, little library of those we have. You can watch those videos and maybe I'll link some more over here um, and put a little subscribe thing up here for you. But what we'll do over time here is build up to where you have 
I don't know, 10 or 15 of these videos to watch. So you get to see a good amount of bad properties and figure out what to avoid just by watching this channel. Uh, okay, here we'll show you how to make more money in our next video. Uh, hopefully there's another video here that's either another bad property review or uh, something else. Um, all right. Hey, y'all take her easy out there.